how's it going? Remember this? We're doing it again. Only this time, we are upping the stakes. These aren't just gonna be any felt animals. These are going to be soldiers in a war. And not just any war, a creature war. So this whole idea started when my friend and I um, threatened to buy each other little animals as gifts. Well, I'm not buying them. I'm making them. We're starting this war. I'm going to send the cutest creatures you've ever seen in your life. That's a lot of pressure. But they're going to be cute. So watch out. So, without further ado, let's get started on the war. So, starting out with my first little creature, the very first thing I'm doing once again is using this little pattern piece and tracing it onto the felt with my fabric marker. So, this particular shape is normally a fox or a raccoon. And I wanted to take the body shape overall and change it up a little bit because this creature is going to be a cat. So I added some cat ears and I chose to give her a little short tail instead of the big poofy tail that's on the fox and or the raccoon. So now I'm just cutting out this shape. I also cut off the little side fluff things on the face and I'm just leaving it round. And um, I also made the neck a little bit thicker than it originally was because I would like this little creature to be fat. And once I had that to my liking, I used it to, as a template to cut out the second body piece. The nice thing about felt is it sticks to itself, so if you are got one piece of felt already, you can use it to make a, uh, a second piece and you don't have to use a pattern, you don't have to pin it or do anything, it'll just stick to itself. Um, so once I had that cut out, I just made sure it was the same size as the original piece. Next piece is the little underbelly piece. So it's kind of hard to tell where this is going to go just by looking at it, but it's kind of the belly of the animal, it has the insides of the legs as well. So I used that pattern piece and now I'm just cutting it out. Next step, as opposed to actually just jumping right into sewing these together, I'm taking the time to sew on the face before. Uh, I think this helped a lot with making sure it looks neat because with my previous animals I tried to sew the face on after it had been stuffed and it made it messier. And so I think this will make it look a little neater and also um, this particular pattern the face is kind of on the front or rather it's kind of on the side of the animal instead of being on the front where the seam goes across like it was on the hamsters. So that allowed me to sew the face on before. So after I had the little green eyes on, I sewed on the nose and mouth. I decided to use gray thread for this so it would show up, but um, due to my own expert experience with black cats and seeing black cats, I think that it actually ended up looking quite a bit like one. So next, now I'm finally sewing the body pieces together. So the first thing I did with these was I faced them right sides together because I intended to turn this right side out when I had finished sewing the edges. Looking back, I honestly wish that I had just sewn it wrong sides together because what happened when I turned it right side out is I lost some of the detail on the ears and all those little corners. But it ended up looking like this. I didn't video the whole process because honestly you couldn't see anything. But here she is. I think she's cute. The tail looks a little bit silly, but honestly, I like it. I think she's fun. So, second project. I've got three different colors of felt here this time, along with my pen and my needle. And this is going to be this round little boy. So to come up with him, I actually used a seal pattern. 
because the seal was my roundest choice, so it was naturally the right one. So as before, what I'm doing first is tracing out the first pattern piece with my pen and cutting it out. And I am using the medium brown for this. It's going to go along the top of the body. And I left the sticker on. Get out of here. Come on, get. It tore all the fuzz off my felt, though. Okay, second piece. I'm doing the same technique as I did before, where I use the first piece as a pattern. And there's more sticker. Oh my goodness, this is getting crazy. And I just finished cutting that out. Now, something else you'll notice here is there's a little dart right there. And you'll see what that ends up doing in just a few minutes here. All right, so the next piece is gonna be the belly piece for this particular animal, and for that, I'm using my lightest shade of brown. And you'll notice I also left the seal tail off on both of these pieces because this is not a seal, this is another cat. All right, so here are the pieces I have so far. I have two side pieces and one belly piece. So then I had to consult the book to try to figure out how I was supposed to piece them together and I continued cutting out more pieces. So I used the flipper pattern for these. I was going to turn them into paws. So I made two of the light felt and I made two of the medium felt. All right, so here are all my pieces. I've got my little foot pieces, my side pieces, and the belly pieces missing. Don't mind me, just searching through my entire table for it. It was on the floor. It was on the floor the whole time. So now what I'm doing, I'm just making sure that the pieces are gonna fit. Oh, psych, I'm actually cutting out more pieces. So this little circle piece is the nose, mouth, muzzle area of the little creature. So I traced that with the pattern and I cut it out of a different sheet of white felt. Uh, this was left over from one of my hamsters in my last felt animal video. But this little guy doesn't just have a plain white nose. So I actually wanted to make a separate little piece to kind of differentiate the tops and the bottoms of his little muzzle, if that makes sense. So I cut that to match the white piece. Next up, I'm taking the medium brown felt. Wow, these labels really won't leave me alone, will they? And I'm cutting two little ears. Uh, I didn't have a pattern for this. I kind of just guessed, and these are what I ended up with. Just making sure they're the same size. And now I'm picking a color of embroidery floss that will match. And the first actual sewing step, here we are. Um, the first thing I'm doing is sewing the two side pieces together. I got a lovely nasty huge knot in it and thankfully after five minutes or so playing with it I actually got it out so I didn't have to start over or anything. So sewing the two body pieces together, pretty straightforward. This is another circumstance where they will get turned right side out after they've been sewn. And it worked better on this project than it did on the other one, just because there weren't the edges. So here's where the darts come into play. And essentially what the darts do with this project is they allow the boy to become even more round than he would be otherwise. Peak roundness comes from these little darts, makes them a circle. 
So here's what it looks like uh, turned right side out. You can see how round it is becoming. The tail section got a little bit too square, but I think it ended up being okay. Next step here is adding on the muzzle, and yes, I did this again. So I just grabbed some white embroidery floss to sew the muzzle on. And it went really fast. And once I had the muzzle on, I sewed on the little top triangle piece with another color that matched that. Alright, here is our little faceless, but not noseless, guy. So, I thought about putting the ears on at this point, and ultimately decided against it, and I decided to go right into the eyes. So this little character has little shapes around his eyes, and in my reference picture, they kind of match the color of his belly and his nose. So I decided, as opposed to cutting out a little piece of felt for these, just to embroider it on. I think this would have turned out better if I'd used all six strands of the embroidery floss, but I had three already sitting out, so I just used the three. And it looks a little sparse, but you know what? I think it's okay. I think it still turned out all right. Honestly, I don't know whose idea it was to have embroidery floss be something that you have to split up or not. Anyways, here is the second little eye design um, going right next to the first, and I'm just sewing on a few little extra details here. Now what I'm doing is taking some dark brown embroidery fleece, this time, or embroidery floss, goodness. This time I used all six strands and I'm sewing on a little brown nose and then I just took it across and I made some little sleepy closed eyes on the eye designs. And the last detail here, I gave him two little dark brown eyebrows. This was another thing I thought about embroidering on, but it would have just been so tiny. Or I thought about using felt for, rather. I th that you, um, you had, you, 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 you Thought about using felt for, but it would have just been so tiny, it wouldn't have made sense. And here is his little face. So cute. Now I'm sewing the ears on, and once again you'll notice this time I sewed the face on before I stuffed him again, and I think it went okay. Um, it was a little hard to see where everything was going to be, but it still turned out neater than it would have if I had sewn it on once he was full of stuffing. Next step, I wanted to make a little spot for his back. Um, that's something else that was in my little reference picture here. So I just kind of cut out a little circle that I was thinking was probably the right size and it ended up being pretty close. So I cut that out. I tried to kind of see how it would fit on there and it wasn't perfect, but I had something in mind to fix it. So I went ahead and just started sewing on the circle to the rear of the guy. Thankfully, I had a lot of high quality help from Iris throughout this project, so props to her. So here you can start to see what I did to um, make this fit better. I cut another little dart in just the circle piece and then I sewed that together um, and also to the back of the other piece when I got to the end of the circle. And that just made it lie flat up against the seam of the two pieces that I'd already sewn together.
No, no, that's dangerous. So next step here, I got the legs out and I was going to put them on and they just looked ridiculous. They looked too much like seal flippers, which is what they're supposed to be. And at this point, I was just kind of tired of this project. So I decided that he wasn't going to have legs. Uh, you know how cats do like the loaf thing when they're lying down? I'm just gonna say he is a loaf and loafs do not need legs. So he is just a circle. So the last step in that case is just sewing on the belly piece. I opted to use the embroidery floss that matched the darker top color uh, just to make it kind of match up a little bit better than if I'd use the light fleece or the light felt color. And the best step of all, filling him with fluff and making him the round boy that he must be. I always love this step and I just feel like the little animals really come to life when you fill them with stuffing. And it's crazy the amount of polyfill that you can fit into this one little tiny stuffed animal. Like it really gets compressed. It's honestly impressive. Ha, get it? Impressive. Hee <laughs> hee. We're still going. There's more stuffing in there. He must be very rotund. So finally, what I'm doing when I have put as much stuffing in him as I possibly can is just finishing up that seam and making sure that none of the stuffing is going to come back out again. And here is our little round boy. I didn't put quite as many details on him as I originally planned, but I think the resemblance is there. And I'm happy with him. I think this is probably my best animal so far. I think I'm starting to get the hang of these. Uh, let me know what you think. So here are my two finished projects. My thoughts on these, I had fun with them. I did this one actually the same day that I did the hamsters from a couple weeks ago, but I didn't have time to finish it in that video, so I decided to make these two their own. This one was super fast and simple. This one, which I thought was going to be pretty simple, actually ended up being a little more complicated. And honestly, I'm going to need a break from felt animals for a while. This has been a little taxing. That being said, I would definitely like to make more of these though, so if you have any particular ideas of what you would like to see, definitely let me know down below in the comments. I have another few ideas for felt as well. Um, I'm thinking about maybe making some felt flowers at some point, or I actually even have started doing some felt landscapes in the past, so if you'd like to see anything like that, let me know. And as always, if you have anything you want me to do, I want to hear your ideas. So tell me about it. Tell me what you thought of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next video. Bye.